finalists of Super Rugby 2016. The Hurricanes will be at home and the Lions will have to travel. That's live on Supersport next weekend on Saturday. Thanks very much, Owen. I can tell you the Highlanders are getting a, a warm, uh, resounding clap as they depart the field. The home team, though, will remain, and quite rightly so, after such a wonderful performance. A wonderful performance made possible by all 23 players, but one in particular has put his hand up today. Our Vodacom man of the match. A real simple decision, Elton Yankees. Well, not only did he control matters, he was strong defensively, and... Uh, as well as that, scored a try, kicked a couple of kicks over the top, great break. I'm going to, before Elton, before I chat to you, I'm going to invite Corin Bennett to just present you with your award. Corin Bennett, a Vodacom Red VIP client. And Elton receives an LG G4 Beats for being today's Vodacom Man of the Match. Elton, it's been an incredible journey for, for this team, but for you personally as well. Yeah, special. Um, I don't have a lot of words. Um, but it's been a big year. We still have another week to go. Just looking at today, a fine effort from yourself. I'm not even going to talk about uh, the normal things we talk about with the fly-off play. What about the defensive effort you put in? Yeah, I knew that they're coming. Um, we had a process this week. Um, we had to stop them. And uh, yeah, thanks to JPN came off this week. We had to take individual responsibilities, especially after last week. We missed a few one-on-one -on -one tackles. Um, so we had to fix it this week. Um, but yeah, it was a great performance from the team, but especially from the Islander side as well. They played for the full 80 and yeah, I'm just very happy and thankful that we get opportunity to go for another week. How much does this mean to you? I can see, I can see how much it means to you, but how much does it mean to you? Yeah, I don't have words. You can't describe it. It's been a long process. Yeah. It's been a great journey, mate. Congratulations. You are today's Vodacom man of the match and thoroughly deserved. Well, you can see exactly what the crowd think of that decision. Elton Yankees has been sublime this season and especially today. Ben Smith, been a good journey, a, a, a great effort in defending your crown. Just didn't get it quite right today. Opportunities not, not going to hand. Yeah, I think, you know, the Lions played really well today and uh, they fully deserve the win. Uh, you know, the, the running rugby that they've been playing has been, um, oh, it's been unreal. So uh, we wish them all the best for the final. It's going to be a great final. Just uh, staying with you guys before we chat about the Lions. It's, it's been a good season um, today. Where did it go wrong today? Yeah, I think when we look back, we'll still be proud of what we've achieved. Uh, yeah, a bit disappointing, uh, you know, the way we played today and we couldn't um, quite put enough pressure on the Lions or couldn't quite execute the way we would have liked. But I'm um, still really proud of the team and um, we'll learn a wee bit from coming here and a uh, tough place to play. Tough place to play, the travel, the altitude, everything is stacking up against you. Oh, that's definitely not an excuse. Every team's got to travel, and yeah, uh, the Lions were a better team today. Super. Well, congratulations, and uh, just quickly give us your prediction next week, and the Lions go to New Zealand and win it. Oh, I can't do that. I wish both teams all the best. <laughs> yeah. Super, mate. Well, thanks very much. Congratulations on a good season. Travel safe. Cheers. Thanks very much. Cheers. Well, the crowd here. Yeah, I tell you, I can tell you, it's not only the crowd that here. The mayor of Johannesburg Park is here, yeah, and uh, he's standing there with. The, the president of the Lions Rugby Union, Kevin de Klerk. Yaku, just I asked Elton the same question. What does this mean for Lions, for the Lions Rugby to be in the final of Super Rugby 2016? Yeah, it's an unbelievable feeling. Uh, yeah, first of all, I just want to thank the Lord. Uh, since we were out of Super Rugby 2013, we said we're going to leave it in the Lord's hands. And uh, we've been building a team uh, since then. And to be in the final now, it's absolutely amazing. It just so sh shows you if you trust God, and lots of things can happen in your life. So it looks to me like you guys have enormous faith in each other as well. Yes, we've been, we've been together as a team now for quite a couple of years. And, uh, and it's a brotherhood, it's a family. We really care for each other and we, uh, we will fight for each other till the end. And I, and I believe it's one of, the, one of the secrets of the team. <laughs> Certainly has shown itself in, in your defensive effort, in particular today. Really strong defensive effort. Yes, uh, you, we all know defence is always going to win you games. Uh, we let them in here at the end that, we, that uh, it wasn't ideal. We're going to have to sharpen up there uh, in, next week in Wellington. But yes, we will work from Monday. We'll enjoy the win and we'll work uh, Monday. So just, just before we allow you to go off and enjoy the win, just tell us through the, uh, the approach today. 42 points. Did you ever dream that you'd score 42 points against the Highlanders in a semi-final? 
Uh, uh, it's unbelievable to score 42 points, but in the build-up in the week, uh, coach uh, told us it's just a normal week. We stuck to our routine and we just did what we were doing the last couple of weeks in the season. We didn't change anything and uh, yeah, the result uh, went our way and we just stuck to what we do and it was just amazing. I'm going to ask you one last question about this home crowd. You're not going to have the, the pleasure of playing a final here next week. You're going to be away from home. But what about the support that the Lions have received here in Johannesburg? Yeah, I just want to thank all the supporters for coming out tonight. Uh, today, uh, it's been amazing playing in front of our home crowd here at Emirates Airline Park. It's no, there's no better feeling than this. They lift our energy and uh, they are part of the success. Thank you for all the support. Well, I'm sure that they will be lifting you next week in your efforts in New Zealand. Best of luck and uh, travel safe and, and bring that trophy home. Thank you so much, Joel. Well, what a game it's been here at Emirates Airline Park. It's the Lions who've come out on top by 42 points to 30. They will travel to New Zealand and next weekend it'll be the Hurricanes against the Lions Super Rugby 2016. What a final that promises to be. But for us, for now, from Emirates Airline Park for Super Rugby 2016, we bid you a, a wonderful evening. Certainly was a wonderful afternoon for those present at Emirates Airline Park. Over 51,000 people turning out at the stadium, which is a wonderful figure and a good way to say farewell to the Lions. We'll be heading off to the land of the Long White Cloud to take on the Hurricanes in Wellington in next week's final. We'll be looking forward to that match and certainly will be wishing the uh, Emirates Lions well. What a semi-final. So many points scored. Um, almost unbelievable to see five tries to four, uh, which also means that uh, uh, the Highlanders came into play. They, it just wasn't to be, though, Jean. We spoke about the fact uh, that they were probably going to feel the effects later on in the match. They made a ton of changes at halftime, or just after the halftime break, uh, but you just got the sense that they were really sucking in air um, at a massive rate. Yeah, well, well done to both teams. I think a fantastic second half of rugby, a lot of tries scored, but, uh, you know, if you have to go dissect this game, I think the Lions played better than the Highlanders in all facets of play. First phases, defence, attack, breakdown, everywhere they, uh, they were better than the Highlanders. So, so credit to them for, for putting up such a performance. Um, test match atmosphere at, yeah. at the venue, um, you know, great skill set on show. Um, fantastic game and I'm just so chuffed for the Lions. Uh, they've got an opportunity to win the competition, one game left, they're in the final. I think we should just get behind them. Yeah, we certainly want to uh, talk about their chances next week, next week, uh, Shimi. But let's first focus on uh, today, what it is they did right against a team that we know um, can play pretty much any opposition in the competition and come out tops. They, they're good all the way through um, are, are the Highlanders. Their forwards, they pack, as you said, very yeah. hardworking, and we know what the backs can do. Look, I, I just think um, the, the Lions outworked the Highlanders pack, but they batched them at scrum time, and that developed in other areas. In ball carry, they were stronger, and the Highlanders didn't really offer a shot, I think, on attack. I thought they tried to run around the Lions rather than going straight and then trying to go around first. So it was pretty easy for the Lions. Look, I mean, we can talk about travel and whatever, but the Lions were just a better team all around. They can play this game next week. The Lions would still beat them. If the Highlanders pack goes backwards at the scrum, their ball carriers aren't working, and Aaron Smith, I've never seen him that tired yeah. in a rugby game in my life. I mean, yeah. towards the end, he was walking to the racks purely because of the intensity of the Lions and the way they were playing. And what I like about the Lions is they ran from deeper, they backed their skills, and they don't go back into their shell. Yeah. I mean, they'd run from deep and then kick it long, bring their back three up, and then start playing from then. But a fantastic performance, outthought, um, outclassed um, intensity, outworked the Highlanders, and they deserve that result. <laughs> Uh, yeah, excellent. And, and also, yeah, you know, we spoke about it prior to the game, the two generals, Sipawanga and Elton Yankees. Yeah. And, and Elton Yankees had a fantastic game last week. I didn't think he would be able to top that. But today he was incredible. Yeah. His decision making, not only uh, in the attacking zone of the opposition, but in his own 22, being able to run, setting up a try, his defensive display, his kicking display. Look, if, if he's going at this right, you know, he's just going to get better and better. Sure. Um, and and uh, amazing, a amazing display from him. And, and that just gave direction to the whole of the team. Um, and, and he was the spark that they needed today and the general that they needed. In fact, one of the nicest tweets that I think I saw today, uh, referring to Elton Yankees, winning, winning the Vodacom Man of the Match Award, called him Brill Yankees, which I think is apt. <laughs> uh, you also saw the emotion after the game. And I think that was a little bit of, uh, of maybe his dad in, dad's influence. Sure. in his career as well and not being there so yes. um, 
Yeah, well, well done to Elton. Well done to Elton. Um, and as she, as we take a look at some of the stats, he really was good, making a lot of meters. Um, and it's those little breaks, the little sniping runs. He was phenomenal. But LT, I want to throw you another tweet that I saw here from Et Letabo, who says, some people believe SA Rugby is on life support and it could die any time, but we have a team in the Super Rugby final. I think that speaks volumes about where we actually really are. I'm roaring, you know. Um, you said a drill, Elton Yankees drill, and I will continue that drill because what we, what we saw today, um, I, I think it was best summed up by the, the captain for the, for the Highlanders when he said, uh, Ben Smith, that the Lions, the, the rugby they play, the type of rugby they played, um, you know, how good that was and how impressed he was with that. And I think if you look at the, the Highlanders players towards the end of the game and how fatigued they were, that was because the Lions were able to stretch them across the park. But in the first half, we saw the Lions crossed over the try line twice uh, as opposed to the Highlanders not being able to score. And that was because they were penetrating the defensive line. They knew how to expose them and they were able to find the gaps and the holes. And then critically in the second half when they came out and uh, one widely said it during the, the halftime interview when he said, when they came back in the second half, the Lions will have to make sure the first 10 minutes within the second half that they score. They came back, they got a penalty and then they got another, another try. And that try from Cardinal Scorsan, I think that to me is the best part of the Lions' game, apart from everything else, was the fact that he, their exit strategy when they're in their own 22. We saw it on a couple of occasions where, as opposed to just getting the ball and kicking it, out, yeah. they have a bit of versatility. And that we saw with Alton Yankees carrying the ball in both hands, summing up the defensive system and then going for it. You know? So I think that creativity, Simi, if you look at that alone, you know, it's a wonderful aspect to the Lions' game that they've sort of come out and they've been able to play that with a lot of confidence, um, this whole team. Yeah, what, what I like about the Lions is their first option is to run. They run and then secure ball and then look to kick from then on. Then they can manipulate the back through. They can come up and start going. But, I mean, you, you can go through it. Alton Yankees was good. How good was Lionel Mapu also? Yep. Uh, Ron Janssen van Rensburg. Skosan looked full of running the whole day. So you go throughout that whole team. But I think a wonderful platform again was laid by the forwards for you guys to score the tries. <laughs> well, I, I, I totally agree. But, you know, when we talk about the exit, I think here, here we've got a clip where we can actually um, have a look at this. And, you know, it, it all talks about, and, John, you know that, especially as a captain, sometimes, you know, there's a game plan. We get to a certain uh, uh, part of the field. But, yeah, on the, on the try line, in the 22, from a scrum, instead of just kicking it, they played it with a move all the way to Ruan Combrang on the other on the other wing and allowing him uh, to exit it from there. Yeah, look, having a scrum on your own try line on the left-hand side of the field and then being able to have the next set play uh, close to the opposition 22, that's incredible, you know. So so they've got the ability to play what's in front of them. So it doesn't matter where that is on the field, they will kick or run depending on what's in front of them. And th this one came somewhere here where we see first the captain took it up, Krill, and then Julian Redling. But now this is important, the decision-making from Alton Yankees in that instance. Heads up rugby, and you know, you talk about the environment that's created. The guys are given that freedom to, to express, this, express themselves, see what's in front of them, yeah. and execute. And then that works. If it doesn't work, well, you know, at least you tried. And that, that's what I liked about that. But again, how many times have we seen New Zealand teams doing that against us? It's fantastic to see that happening. But again, Alton Yankees, you, you're right, Sean, about your, your halfbacks or your 10 being a general in the key games. From and then on, Alton was... was I mean, had a, a flawless game. Yeah, making making critical decisions, you know, mm. and and the decision making today was spot on. So um, it's it's being put in that position more and more and more, making mistakes along the way. But then the later on, the more experience you get, you more ke making the right decisions more times than not. And certainly today they were spot on with can, every decision. They can made. we just also talk about the the the, the loose forward combination because the, the loose forward trio Dixon Lentz as well as Whitelock for the Highlanders versus a Tecklenburg um, Ackerman as well as Jaco Krill, how the Lions lose for a trio, how well um, Simi, they were able to work, not just in defence, but at the breakdown, getting the ball, running into spaces, and how that, how that allows the backs to be able to find that, that, the gaps that you were um, referring to. No, look, in that contest, there was only one winner, and that was the Lions. Ackerman was direct, he was physical. I mean, uh, uh, Tecklenburg, again, consistent, working midfield, and then uh, uh, Yaku Creel out wide. But what I like, Ashwin, also is some good old-fashioned guts. We saw that cross-tackle yeah. from Yaku yeah. Creel, where he went from the scrum. I mean, forget about the system. With Tecklenburg, he chased, he went, yeah. got the wing in. And it's just some good old-fashioned guts from, from flankers. 
stuff you see in schoolboy rugby, you know, with the flanker just chasing for the corner flag. So some some really good work there. Yeah, but the loose forwards were just more abrasive and more aggressive. It's, that's not something you can coach. You know, that, that comes from within and that comes from... Johan um, Ackermann will disagree. Huh? No, well, it comes from, <laughs> from having a good culture and guys just playing for each other. You know, you saw in that yeah. instance, it was Yaku Krill, but he sort of got a push from Warwick Tecklenburg yeah. was right behind him to make that final tackle. So, you know, you, you can see, yes, the, it's the Lions team, but pride is very, very relevant yeah. in the way that they are playing at the moment. John, I just want to on that. When you say that you can't coach that, you know, I, I fully agree because, you know, here's a situation where we, there's a pattern, the way that they play. The captain, Jakob Krul, talked about it, how the coach said that we're not going to do anything different. We're going to stick to um, what we've been doing the whole season long. So we can see wild coach side, there's a system, they know how to play. But then this morning um, in the Star, coincidentally, I read, um, and I think it was Jack Van Avestes that had the interview, where he talked about the, the man behind the scenes that we haven't heard about. And his name is Yanni Pater. So, and Yanni Pater is the team psychologist, but he also um, happened to be the Bulls' team psychologist at the time when the Bulls were winning uh, Super Rugby titles. Now, we all know as a team, we, when you have a team psychologist that are able to assist you and just take it up that extra notch. Now, when you talk about the intangibles, the things we can't coach, perhaps that psychological aspect, you know, perhaps there is where uh, a Yanni Pata is coming to. And, you know, is that perhaps something that I think that's, that is quite evident in the way that the Lions is performing? Yeah, look, I think uh, mental conditioning is important. I hope uh, Omiani is going to Wellington. Yeah. He's going to bring back, bring back the trophy. But you know, look, I think mental mental skills is probably. I mean, you know, with the All Blacks, they've got uh, is it Gilbert Tonoka that's been there I think for a good ten, and he's part of the management team. He's actually got an, a, a coach's uh, blazer with with the team, and he's part and parcel about it. Look, I, obviously, you, you'll know the intricacies mm -hmm. of what um, the, the team psychologist or the mental skills coach does at the Lions. But I think if, if you go into any campaign without one, it's crazy to do that. I think there's times where it's pressure. And players go through certain, through certain emotions. And if you've got a guy that can manage it, develop culture, leadership within a team, it's, it's, well, it's well worth it. And it's, it's one of the intangibles that every team should work on. Jean, um, you guys were talking about the loose trio just now, and I just want to bring it back um, one quick step. And we spoke about the fact before the match, the Lions ran out without their captain. Yeah. But the change that had to be enforced for today, that saw um, Ron Ackerman come in, is it, uh, is it something that you think could have actually aided the Lions? I'm not saying that uh, you want to be without Warren Whiteley, but just in terms of the, phys the physical aspect that he brings to the game, the difference in, in approach that he brings, is it something that suited them better against the Highlanders today? Yeah, look, I, I don't think um, Warren not being there today had any influence on the performance of the Lions. Yeah. You know, they, they still just went on and put up a, a massive performance and it's just a well-oiled side at the moment. So um, I, I thought for this game, particularly against a Highlanders team that's got a physical pack, um, Ruan Ackerman fitted that ball fantastically. So he had a great game as well. Um, and, um, and, you know, what, what a bonus to have. What a situation to be in, to be able to hopefully bring back a guy like, like Warren Whiteley next week for a final game. Inspirational guy. And then to bring one of those loose forwards. I don't know who they're going to leave out then, yeah. but to get him <laughs> off the bench in the last 20, 25 minutes. So, you know, the, the, the Lions have now showed. They've, they've beaten all the top sides. They've beaten the Islands. They've beaten the Crusaders. They've beaten the Chiefs. Chiefs. They, the one team they haven't beaten yet, the Hurricanes. The Hurricanes. Yeah. And now it's an opportunity for redemption. Uh, they didn't play well against them um, early in the year. They get another shot at it. With, 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 with the emphasis on yet, just from John. Yes. Yes. One yes. team that the Lions haven't beaten yet, yet is the Hurricanes. Because, you know, here we've got uh, the uh, Highlanders team that have, uh, you know, they've convincingly beaten the Lions earlier this season. We were building up and talking about the quality side that the Highlanders is, you know, and notwithstanding, they've got phenomenal players um, in this Highlanders team. But where the Lions were able, I think, to get the better on the Highlanders in the second half was, especially in the first half, or in this game, rather, was in the first half. Lions scored twice without allowing the Highlanders to score. Now, it's at the high felt. We, we knew the intensity of this game was going to increase um, in the second half even more than what it was in the first half. So that ability to not allow the Highlanders to score, um, I think, is one to the Lions, but also Alia Dixon that was supporting the Lions um, in that. So that, that to, to, to me, is probably the one aspect from the Lions where I think they really were able to get one over the Highlanders in this one. 
Yeah, look, I, I just think what, where the Highlanders got it wrong tactically is they didn't have line speed. They didn't commit at the breakdown and they stood off Ash. So against a team like Lions that keeps the ball and they've got big runners, it's a dangerous thing to do. We saw earlier on in the season, the Hurricanes came with a massive rush and that sort of shocked or surprised the Lions. And that's going to be the, probably if we look into the final, we can start discussing that. That's going to be the probably the difference or the hard thing with the Lions. Will they be given that space to maneuver? But if their pack dominates like they did today, then it's very hard to get line speed because your loose forwards are going forward, your big runners are playing, and it makes it a lot easier to dominate. I was, I was so impressed by the loose forwards. That, again, Franco Mostert. I mean, that little chip and chase, he got that ball, that oh, offload. How good was he? But, but exactly, Shami, as we said Ooh. earlier on, you know, it's the... It's those tactical attacking kicks that will make the difference or will assist you when you do have a rush defence against you. And, and Elton did exactly that. That chip kick to score a try, the cross kick for another try. Yeah. You know, it was, the, it was the full package today. Mm. They get a second opportunity at it next week. And yet... <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. Well, it certainly is interesting. And there are a couple of uh, key individuals uh, for the Lions, at least have been for the course uh, of the season. One of them who um, finally managed to gain higher honours is none other than Rowan Kombrink. Uh, wonderful season for him, and he still is performing optimally. Rowan Kombrink, you guys are going to the final. <laughs> yeah, bit of an unreal feeling now. It's the uh, same feeling when someone passes away. It doesn't kick in immediately, but uh, I'm sure it will in the week. I mean, you just started off uh, like a house on fire. Was that the main approach, against, especially against this New Zealand side? We saw you guys against the Crusaders and again against the Highlanders. Same intensity in the first few minutes. Yeah, look, with every, every quality side you play against, you have to make a statement early in the game. And, uh, uh, yeah, we did that today. Uh, credit to the forwards, credit to... You know, the vision of Elton and Faf, you know, to, to lead the team in the right direction. And, you know, when we uh, made a statement in the beginning, uh, I felt that it put them on the back foot and it was hard for them to play catch-up rugby. And then, and then you look at it, I mean, uh, about 50,000 people came out here. The place was red. You could hear the shots, lions, lions. How does that make you feel donning that jersey? Yes, you know, when I started in 2012, you know, to do, till, till, you know we had a vision from 2013 on and you know it felt like it came uh, came into being today and uh, you know without the support and without everybody uh, backing us in the week and you know seeing like you said 50,000 people here today it was it was incredible and you know I, I believe that took us home and you look at that let's look into the future now prospect hurricanes in Wellington it's not gonna be the same as Emirates Airline Park but when did they in the cake tin looking forward to that <clears throat> Yeah, I've never played there, um, but the Highlanders did it last year. You know, they went against the odds. They went and they beat the Hurricanes there. So, you know, this is why you play rugby. Um, if it was easy, everybody would do it. So, you know, if we can pull off something incredible next week, I mean, how special would that be? Peace of luck for next week. Thank you. Thank you, Barney. Yeah, certainly a man who showed his emotions as well, as we saw with Alton a little earlier today. Ron Gombring shared his emotions when uh, he got uh, announced as uh, one of the Springbok uh, tourists, in fact, before winning his first cap. Uh, so uh, he'll be really happy with uh, the way the season has gone for him and the way the season is wrapping up. Um, Ashwin, is, it's wonderful. I mean, he was almost an un unassuming wing because we've got guys who seem to have a little bit more explo explosiveness, uh, maybe a bit more pace, but this guy is the full package. And it was because of his consistency on the wing, um, Kola, where you find that he was always just being consistent. And I think what has happened in, in recent years was he's been able to try and find the gaps and just bring something majestic to uh, the wing play. And I think that is what we see in Ruan Combrang. Not just does he have a good boot, um, but also he kicks to poles. He's, a, he's great um, as, as an exit strategy as to what we've seen earlier as well. But then he's able to run and find those gaps. He's a phenomenal support player. So I think he, as you um, correctly mentioned, he's the full package. He's got everything um, as yeah. a winger. His pace, he's strong. Um, and, and I think, you know, uh, he's, if you look at uh, a guy like Ruan Kumrung, his partnership with Andres Kutsi as well as Courtney Skosan as their back three for the Lions, I think as a combination, um, they've just been sort of so solid at the back there that, you know, they've really added to the Lions' performance. You talk about his boot. How valuable, guys, is it to have somebody uh, who can kick off either foot, um, especially playing in the back three? Yes, we know we've got fly halves who are adept at it, but to have somebody who can operate at fullback at wing, uh, who, and we saw him, 
uh, change feet, I suppose, and uh, pump one off uh, of the the left uh, for clearance. How valuable is that? Yeah, look, I can I, I can just say it, it, it must be fantastic because I couldn't kick with either. So uh, <laughs> to be able to have two options is just fantastic. Um, and you see, you saw how, how easily it did it. You know, yeah. just stepping off the right, moving on to the left, and kicking still a massive kick. So um, it helps so much. And we, when you've got a guy on the wing that can kick with both feet and can can help you with your with your exits, you know, it does it does take a lot of pressure off um, off your Nine and ten. You know, I think uh, you know Ruan Komrong. We talk about him, but then there's another player for which I think perhaps, uh, uh, guys, you know, if if I could, I would have given him a round of applause. But Ruan uh, Janse van Rensburg. You no. can still, you can still. You know, you know, I mean, you guys you can, can still, still stand you can up still for him. He, he deserves a standing ovation. Yeah. I, John, twelve. 12, his performance, not just today, last week, the week before, he's literally taken that number 12 jersey and said, it's mine. And not just the fact that he's in that position, but he scores the tries, one of the top tries scores in the team, <coughs> finds the gaps, distribution as well, and we saw his pace. Yeah, look, Ashwin, if you go through the Lions team today, you could tick off every single play and say that that guy was so much better than his opposite number. Um, he gets a and, double tick. And so Ruan, yeah. Ruan gets a double tick. Yeah, well, I'm coming to Ruan. <laughs> uh, you know, and then from, from his point of view, you know, uh, today actually I thought he had a, a quieter game compared to some of his previous games because he's just been so outstanding this season. Oh. You know, so um, to go into a semi-final as a youngster to put up a performance like this and then they can take you off at 60 minutes because they know how valuable he is to the cause for the final. You know, credit to him and what, he, what he's done this season. And also, uh, I want to emphasize this again, is center play is so important to build partnerships. And I think the way that him and, uh, and Lionel Mapu is, is partnered in the midfield, I think that's so valuable to, to, um, to the Lions team at the moment. And you go throughout the team again, yeah. the back three, great combination. Midfield, great combination. Yeah. Nine, ten, same thing. And, and throughout the team. So, yeah, well, well done to, to him specifically. Double yeah. tick for him, Sammy. And yeah, then triple if we, tick if you want. But. You know, no, no, so it's a <laughs> double tick for him. But then we take Lionel Mapu and we have to, you know, bold letters, massive funds because this guy, you know, in fact, I think if you look at him now, all, we can talk about Lionel Mapu as being one of the best number 13s in the world um, at this stage. You agree? Disagree? No, look, I, I would say, look, why, he has why to... are you asking Sammy? Yeah. Yeah. No, <laughs> Who's he to judge? But look, I, I, what I would say is, I think, you know, it's, it, there's a big... He's one of the wiser forward. Uh, yeah, forward exactly. Okay. I I think you've got to be proven on international level, to be honest with you, but the, the potential's there, you know, but it's just the performance that's determined. But the way he's playing now, what I like, and you're right, John, Ryan Janssen van Rensburg brings the best out of Lionel. Yeah. That's what I like. Since he's come onto the scene, Lionel's been playing better, which is good, though. But also, you've got to also look at a guy like Dylan Smith, who was playing under 21 rugby, the yeah. said prop, playing under 21 rugby last year. Malcolm Marks is still a young kid. Julian Riedling is. And these guys literally manhandled a Highlanders pack around that park. <laughs> so it's good to see... Um, Van Rensburg under 21's lost. These guys coming into a system where they just look like they've been part of it for so long and hopefully they'll still be there for a long time. But as you're, you're right, I mean, if these guys stick with this and they can, you know, win in Wellington and then transfer this form onto international level, then we can start looking at a World 15 and saying, look, Bold and, yeah, there. big font um, there, put him in. <laughs> That's the, but, you know, you, the guys have got to be proven at an international level and then we can look at that first. Yeah, well, I actually wanted to bring that um, up uh, as soon as we've heard from the coach, Johan Ackerman, uh, about the physical, physical style traditionally of South African teams. But Johan Ackerman has had uh, also a phenomenal season and has been credited for much of the Lions' success this year. Let's hear from the Lions' mentor. One, Coach Ackerman's Lions are playing the Hurricanes in Wellington next week in the Super Rugby Final. Those words just say that, that statement, how does that make you feel? Sure, Bob, there's no words that describe that, you know. Um, it's just amazing, uh, the feeling, the honour, the, the, the humbleness, you know, that's the, the, how proud I am of the, of the whole management, the whole player group, uh, the whole union. And it's amazing, I think in this week, uh, three years ago, we played the promotion delegation. And how we, you know, stuck together as a unit and how we were blessed. I was just going to thank the families and the, the support out there and the Lord for blessing us with that and the privilege to play this game. 50,000 faithful Lion supporters, Joburgers, pride of Joburg, came out to support you. Seeing that stadium red, how did that make you feel? Yeah, it was tremendous. You know, I said to Swayze when the whistle went, I said, look this crowd, you know, amazing. 
so glad that people saw history with us. And um, most of all, I, I want to thank the supporters, but thank the, the, the country. We got, I've got a lot of messages from, from all over, you know, Sharks people, Bulls people, doesn't matter. And I want to thank everybody for the support. Now back to the game. The start was important and it was the start that you wanted. In the second half, the boys kept on pulling the pressure. Proud of the efforts and what they've done? Tremendous. You know, again, you know, there's guys today that had to step up. They didn't get a much opportunity. Steve David, Lawrence Erasmus, a lot of guys, you know, again, Jakob Krill leading the pack without Warren. There were some stirring performances and it's just a squad effort, you know, and, and tremendous proud of the guys. Obviously, we lacked a bit. There's something there at the end that we can look at, but uh, proud. I would have taken a one point as well. And you look now at the prospect of the final away from home. Probably when we, you know, the Caketon, you played there, it's windy, it's blowing up, uh, the traveling challenges, looking into it uh, as a stride is something that this team uh, can actually achieve? Yeah, we have to face it, you know, there's nothing we can do about it. Again, you know, big challenge, uh, tremendous hurricane side to have uh, been in form. Uh, the guys love touring, hopefully, we'll, we'll travel well, and, uh, you know, it's going to reset, it's 0 0. And if, if it's windy, it's for both, hopefully, and, you know, we'll, we'll give it our best shot. You know, there's nothing more I can ask for the guys. They've continuously, um, you know, when we ask, uh, have, have given us that satisfaction, so hopefully we can go do it again. You'll probably be flying down with Jamie Joseph. Last year they said they, they won't do it. They, no one believed, and they went and they've done it in, in the cake tin. Maybe you're going to have a word with him? Yeah, for sure, you know, uh, they've proven it, you know, um, but again, you know, I suppose all the pressures on the Hurricanes, they ended number one, they are playing at home, so we can just go out and enjoy our, our game. I think it's uh, incredibly difficult to put into perspective how difficult uh, the Lions um, road has been over the last couple of seasons and how far they've come as a union and as a team. Uh, and there was an interesting tweet, guys, that I saw here, and um, I, you might run to weigh in uh, at uh, Mobiza asks or says, uh, rest in peace to old school physical, uh, physical style of uh, rugby South African teams are accustomed to. Lions play some exciting rugby. But I'd like to add to that <coughs> that they haven't actually moved away from the physical approach because because we've seen them in the tight exchanges. They do what they're supposed to do. Their scrums are phenomenal. Their line-outs are good. Their forwards work hard. They do pull in uh, the big hits and the physicality. It's just perhaps not necessarily always playing the one-off runners off nine, um, playing with a little bit more expansion. But they haven't necessarily lost the physicality, have they? No, not at all. And I, and I think that's the key to, to their success at the moment, is that they have added to that. You know, so, so they've got the ability to play a physical game, but they've also got the ability to play an expansive game and take teams on in the wider channels, and that I think makes them dangerous. Yeah. So, you know, both these teams, both these teams have got a lot to play for next year and or next week. And uh, you know, you, you sort of look at it in, in life, in sport, you don't often get second chances, and uh, and the Lions get the chance to redeem themselves after the performance against the Hurricanes. Um, earlier in the year, but also the Hurricanes have got an opportunity to redeem themselves after losing the final sure. last year um, at this venue. So it makes it once again for a great final, and I think the two best teams playing in it. Yeah, you talk about dangerous champion, Shimi? Yeah, look, uh, <laughs> you can talk about the, but the Lions, I mean, Ron Kumbrick's 100 kilograms. I think uh, Ron Janssen from is 100 plus. Lionel Mopu is a big guy, and they run hard and they run straight. It's a, you can't outweigh the physicality of, of a team. These guys are tough. They're physical. What they're good at is attacking space and executing well at pace. They've got a big back line, fast, loose forwards, and a hard working pack, and that works for them. But you're right, John, about the redemption. But I think the Lions have got such a, such a great opportunity to, to, to do something special. And we just hope, you know, we wake up or Saturday morning, they, they pull it off and, you know, we welcome them back. But what a great opportunity, Ash, for these bunch of youngsters, you know, to go do something absolutely special. They'll be written off. The New Zealand media will talk them up. But the Hurricanes do have a question mark against them in terms of finals. Big That's question mark. I, mean, I actually want to go back to this page because here we have got the, this weekend semifinals, the Hurricanes beating the Chiefs and then the Lions beating the Highlanders. And if we do one more swipe, next week it is the Hurricanes the Lions in the finals. This moment, guys, what we see on this screen, I think, you know, we should not underestimate this because Johannes mentioned it uh, three years ago, this team was playing promotion relegation for Super Rugby. 
Uh, uh, last year in the World Cup, they had no players into the, the Springbok team. All of a sudden this year, they the, uh, the team waving the South African flag, going overseas now, having to play the Hurricanes in the final. And when the coach talk about the pressures on the Hurricanes, I think I fully agree with him because the Hurricanes, they lost the final against at home last year against the Highlanders. They've beaten the Lions already um, in the season. They finished top of the log. They're at home. And so all of a sudden, the pressure is there. Now, if the coach talks about the other team is under pressure, we look at the way that the Lions are playing. We can almost say that they're giving themselves an even a bigger chance now psychologically to go and beat uh, the Hurricanes away from home, which yeah. will be no, no easy feat. Yeah, just to elaborate on that statement, if you look at the Hurricanes in New Zealand rugby, They've always lost finals and they've always been knocked out in playoffs, ITM Cups. They've lost a couple of finals. So they're sort of known as the team that always comes second in New Zealand rugby. I saw a tweet earlier on it and said the Hurricanes have got the opportunity to end 21 years of pain. And that is the sort of pressure they're going to be under and whether they can execute that. And Akis is right. The Lions have got nothing to lose and it's a great position to be in. And hopefully they thrive under those conditions. But what I like today is that because they were favourites and they delivered... They delivered. Yeah, that's important. And, Kola, you know, to your tweet also, and I'm also don't know who these guys are always tweeting you because you're referring to your tweets now for the second time. <laughs> no, they're tweeting <laughs> super good, actually. Come on, come on. Come on. But <laughs> you know, when you talk about the physicality, I think if we go and you look at the Lions, the, the way that they play, you find that they have mastered one thing. They know when to accelerate with ball in hand. Mm. There's players in motion when they have the ball. And they play with their pace. They don't just run hard at whatever's in front of them. And they select where they want to accelerate. The gap that they want to accelerate into... And that we saw that in the first two opening tries, um, where, especially the first one with Alton Yankees uh, scoring that try, where we were able to see he was running straight, but not straight into a player on the opposite side. He ran straight into a gap, even though it was a, a five-meter difference. And that, I think, is what the Lions brings to the party. And again, yes, where we have to say the coaching staff, They've been, able, they've been able to implement this with, with this group of players over the past three years. And you can see now repetition, how it's, when it's implemented, it, it actually looks flawless. So well done to the Lions on, on that one as well. Yeah, certainly is a job well done to them. Um, just a very quick, well, we, we will get a chance to look ahead because I'm already hearing and seeing, reading messages, utterances of what's to, to be expected next weekend when Bowden Barrett comes up against Alton Yankees. So that's going to be an matchup. interesting little tussle. But before we get there, let's first completely uh, uh, finish the focus on this match. And uh, as mentioned a little earlier, Jamie Joseph will be uh, bidding his team farewell as he heads off to Japan. Tony Brown is the man who will take over as the head coach of the Highlanders for next season. So this was his last match in charge of the Highlanders. How tough was it start from the Lions, the way that they came on at you in the first half? Yeah, look, I mean, um, early on in the game, we had a couple opportunities that we just never nailed. And at the end of the day, I thought the Lions had a marvellous game and really played. Um, they took all their opportunities and put us under a lot of pressure, particularly with the speed that they played. Um, yeah. You look at the way that they played, the intensity that they brought on to the game. Maybe a trip too far? Um, no, not necessarily. Look, I mean, you have to give credit when credit's due. I mean, a very good team, well-balanced team. Um, we really struggled at the breakdown today, and, and um, they got the upper hand at the scrum time as well. And, uh, and then when we got our opportunities to score, we just didn't nail it. And um, semi-final time, you have to do those sorts of things. And then the prospect of the Lions playing against the Hurricanes next week, I guess you have to give us a bit of what your thoughts are on that. Yeah, look, I mean, um, it's, you know, they've got to get on a plane tomorrow and head off to, um, it won't be the conditions that, that we experienced today and that will probably be their biggest challenge. But look, if they get um, the sort of ball they got from their set piece today, then they're going to be a handful. Commiseration, but thanks so much to all the entertainment. Yeah, thanks very much. Yeah, right up. Sure, He's certainly going to be missed uh, in the New Zealand rugby circles. He uh, is a man who came on when the Highlanders, let's not forget, guys, were, were really battling in terms of New Zealand teams. And we spoke about the fact that they are a small town team, southern um, a South Island team, small town in Dunedin. Uh, they really weren't getting the results they were getting. For them to be, well, no longer champions, but to have reached those heights speaks volumes for what Jamie Joseph and his uh, his coaching staff managed to achieve them the last couple of years. Yeah, they are still champions for a week. <laughs> um, but, uh, yeah, it is. And, and, and I think uh, Shimmy alluded to it earlier. 
that uh, a lot of these players don't actually play their, their local rugby in, in Dunedin. In Dunedin. They, they come from different franchises um, and, and what they have created there, they've, they've created a, um, um, you know, a culture and an and a environment that's a happy one and that guys can thrive in. So, um, you know, credit, credit to Jamie Joseph for that. Um, and also, you know, you, you look at the success of this team and then you go through that pack um, and the names that you have there, there's not a lot of big names there, <clears throat> but they're getting the results. So yeah. um, he's doing something right. And uh, we all know that, that Japan isn't too bad when it comes to rugby. Uh, <laughs> he's, he's going there as a head coach now, and, and, I'm, and I'm sure they'll only get better with, with him being there. Yeah, certainly is going to be a big loss. But we spoke about Tony Brown, um, a man that uh, you, you, got, you played with uh, and obviously saw him move into the coaching uh, when he was at Western Province, John. Uh, and Shibi, you also know him quite well from Cape Town. They're not going to lose too much. No, definitely not. I think, um, you know, one good thing about New Zealand is that they'll put a guy in that assistant role and then when he's ready, he'll, he can step up to the mark. And I think Mark Hammett might be joining him as forwards coach. He's pretty experienced in that role. Yeah. He's got someone to fall back on. But I think, um, you know, a, a guy like um, Jamie Joseph is a big loss to, to the Highlander region. Well respected. He's an absolute icon there. But good luck to him in Japan, like you mentioned. But it's Tony Brown's time and uh, he'll do a phenomenal job. And, you know, if you can take this pack here, and, uh, Jean mentioned it, you know, there isn't any big names. And for a coach to get the best out of these guys just says a lot about what he can achieve. Yes, yeah, certainly has done very well over the last couple of years. Um, but, uh, Ashwin, the one fascinating thing about this match is that the Lions started in the lead and they stayed ahead for the full, the complete 18 minutes. At halftime, they'd outscored the Highlanders by two tries, 2-0. Uh, it was 17-6 was the halftime score. But in the second half is when the Highlanders also kicked into gear, uh, but the Lions were just too good. They just never managed to catch them on that, uh, on that scoreboard. I think one of the players even mentioned that they wanted to start strong, um, and that's what they did, be able to score two tries and going into the lead um, in half time. So I think that was good to see um, from the Lions. And you know, then the question was whether or not they will be able to continue that um, in the second half and staying in the, in the lead. And in the second half, gentlemen, we saw a number of tries that were scored, and um, it was started with the Lions um, being able to score first in the, second, in the second half. We've looked at this one, and one of the areas, and we'll talk about this after we've looked at, at the clips, was the kickoff um, receiving from the, the Lions, the kickoff received uh, by the Lions and how they fielded that. But this try, we've, we've talked about it some way, we have discussed it, and again, we cannot underestimate the brilliance. It'll be good to see if Alton can replicate um, this form again, third week in a row, um, as I has mentioned, against the Hurricanes. No, look, it's, it's about punishing areas. A player rushed up, used his skill, his skill set, his agility and feet, and from then on created that overlap. But well done to uh, Alton, and just the mindset of the ability to say, look, I, I'm not going to stick to script here. I'll play what I see in front of me, and that's what happened. So this was straight from the kickoff, and you know the, the, uh, the Highlanders being able to score here. Yeah, yeah um, the, uh, Lions a little bit tight um, on defence there in the midfield, and, and uh, Highlanders being able to get around them there, but not a not a massive defensive problem there. Um, and and also, you know, the the the, the Lions were easily uh, in the lead there. This try was a was an absolute stunner as well, um, and and just you know. They, they're looking for the space all the time. You know, good stepping, offloads. Uh, again, getting the ball wide here because I'm, they know that they'll be tight on defence. I'm going to see if I can pause it there. We can point kick from Alton yeah. once again. Perhaps we can even go back here, John, and just uh, perhaps highlight what you're saying there because here's the last defender um, for, the, for the Highlanders. And then if we highlight on this side in the... No, there's the, the white def, um, attacker, which I think was Jakob Krill for the, uh, for the line. So, uh, again, be able to size up where the gap is there. Yeah, yeah. Um, and, you know, Shimmy, you asked uh, before the game, well, what, what happens if the kick doesn't go where he wants it to go? Well, you know, you can just see the time that they put in to be able to get that pinpoint every single time. Uh, you know, again, credit, credit to them for the, for the effort put in. Um, same here, attacking, you know, from everywhere. Seeing the space, identifying the space, getting the ball into the space. And skill set from 1 to 15. There you see Lionel... Ma okay, no, that's a turnover. Yeah, uh, no, so this was the, that, that was actually the turnover. And I think if we, yeah, but if we can <laughs> but, go back here... But it was a great move. It was a great move. <laughs> great move. No, but, but, but John, you're so correct because... You know, and if we can focus on that because here's, here's a classic example. And Simi, you were, you, were, you were speaking about the breakdown. And so if we go back, let's see our touch screen. Here we go back, go back, go back, go back. So if we play it from here, the Lions, were, they've been in control up until that moment where, there we go, the ball is in there, and no one is protecting that ball, and there the ball goes out. 
So no. we, we talked about we talked about the breakdown, and we can highlight it there just to show, because the ball has now been stolen um, by, um, by the Highlanders. Now the breakdown, the Hurricanes, the Highlanders, the way they were able to beat the Lions before was by attacking them at the breakdown. Did all the wonderful play? John has just commented on it. Told uh, told us how wonderful that play was. Then turning the ball over, and look what happens next. Yeah, look, uh, that, that was also, I mean, the, the breakdown was good because the ball carries were good. But there I think Sopoanga should have been wearing a Lions jersey because, you know, whether that <laughs> ball was out or not is, is debatable. But the support play, yeah, I mean, this is phenomenal work here. We weren't sure where they got the try, but again, it was, it was millimetres between that try. But um, again, look, if, if your ball carries are good, generally your breakdown will be good because you're working so hard. And I think, John, this is the try you were saying yeah. is phenomenal. Yeah, I, I, it was that area of the field. That's why, that, that's why I got... Uh, uh, Redeem yourself. <laughs> you know, I think there, there, were so oh, many, there were so many turnovers. <laughs> there were so many turnovers in this phase of play. And then eventually the Lions getting it back. I think they're going to bring it to this side and then take it back to the other side and eventually score the try. But yeah. my point I was trying to make was that, you know, skill set from 1 to 15. If you go through this phase of play, you know, everyone can pass. Everyone can offload. They can run with the ball, um, you know, cleaning, uh, passing what, from scrum off, everything, you know, they've, they, they've, they're fantastic. What was good in, in this try was it was a build-up where there was nothing on. It was the 72nd minute, both teams were tired, Sami. They just kept on keeping the ball alive. At one point, the Islanders even stopped defending, but the Lions were able to just keep yeah. the ball alive up until they were able to get that moment that required of brilliance and it came yeah. in the form yeah, of Alton. Even Altena. before that, Hooker taking on, offload from the Hooker to the prop, prop then setting it up, Flav with a chip kick, Lock taking it up and then offload from the lock to the other lock taking it low on the knees. So. Yeah, I'm surprised you remembered all of that. Oh, The Highlanders there are shattered. I mean, they're just watching the Lions dance in front of them and they're actually there's no, no one is speed. coming up. No one's coming up and they're absolutely gassed there. And that's exactly what happened here. But phenomenal try. I think I was stuck in a hollow. Tried hard, John. I think he, you know, probably the player of the game for the Highlanders. He, he sort of was the one guy that kept probing. He came off his wing, tried to steal ball, but the end, uh, the lines were just too good. They were too good. And you know what? What? what you when we talk about uh, that one with the lines, uh, the Highlanders, well, w the defenders never came up. The very next play, or after they scored the try, you saw the intensity from the Highlanders. Yeah, again, they've been able to score that intensity running into uh, the gap, w um, running onto the ball. So it just shows you that moment, how momentarily you are so tired, so fatigued. We've all been there as players, and you are unable to even go forward. And that is what happened um, in that, yeah, in that instance. Yeah, I think some people have been there more times than others, but... Uh, talk to yourself, <laughs> now, Sammy. Yeah. Yeah, no, you say, <laughs> you want to say, <laughs> you've been there more than what we've been there. Oh. Oh. No, you think I'm not just running on? <laughs> I might need that line psychologist to, to explain this one, but um, you, you're right, Ash, but uh, you know, one, one good thing, you've got to give the Highlanders, they kept trying, they were behind, they showed fight, and we've got to credit them with that. It's, 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 we've spoken about Jamie Joseph and what a great, great team they are, but to see this Highlander team not just dying and fading away, to actually show some fight at the end was also credible, you know, they have been great champions. No one gave them a chance to win it last year. They've almost close to backing it up. But we're going to have a new champion this year, John. Yeah, but, but, but also with, with 20 minutes to go, the game was basically over. And you yeah. can see uh, Johan Ackerman's thoughts there where he brought the bench on, you know, get the, some of the guys off, get them fresh for next week and already thinking about next week. So, uh, yes, there were some defensive lapses from the Lions, but I think that was due to the, the scoreline as well and, uh, and sort of having their minds on next week already. I think that if there's one area of concern for me um, out of the whole performance from the Lions, um, apart from the fact that at moments, you know, I think it's also, again, just the defensive lapses, concentration, where they were able to um, allow the, the Highlanders to find the gap in the defensive line. But one aspect of the game where today I thought perhaps the Lions was a little bit vulnerable, I think it was on the kickoff re um, receive. Um, there, there was a number of occasions where, you know, there was even a, a try that was scored, and I, and I think. Um, we might just have it yeah, on the touch screens. Let's see. Oh, there we go. Yep. And, and this was the, the kick of receives from the Lions. Um, you know, and it, it's very important after you scored to be able to get the ball back. And they were, the, I think this part of the game, the Highlands was, ab was able to win uh, this, this collision.
Yeah, look, that, that's obviously an individual air, um, individual sort of work on. But we've seen a lot of, even the All Black, Sean, where they kick that short kick and Kieran Reed chases up to go for it. But it, it's something, that it's, it's fixable, you know. What, one, um, you know, we talk about this, they, they can fix this within a week, Ash. But one area where the, the Hurricanes cannot hide, just to inter interrupt, is at scrum time. You, you can fix kickoffs, you can fix lineouts, but at scrum where it's a physical contact one-on-one, -on -one, that's one area where the Hurricanes will be worried about the Lions. So, so you're saying that as far as this is concerned, we don't have to worry too much about this because it's fixable within yeah. a week. Um, because I think it was just one area where the Highlanders saw that the Lions were vulnerable and they kept on doing it. It resulted into a try at one instance there. But talking about the Hurricanes, I think I'm not so... Maybe perhaps we've got the morning tries as well um, or the game of the morning that we can have a look at that and see. Um, John Simi, this yeah. performance this morning, um, yes, Simi was classical Bowden Barrett um, at that point, being able to size up, just put in the kick and, and collecting that, the pace he showed on this one uh, that resulted in the first try for the Hurricanes. No, like it's, it was good work, but you know, at, at this time, the, the Chiefs were attacking, attacking turnover, then before you know it, the Highlanders strike. The Chiefs were on the uh, Hurricanes line, attacked for about a good 10, 10 minutes. Audi Sevilla does a pick and drive through there. Chiefs are defending again. That's where the Hurricanes, in terms of counter-attack, probably have been the, you know, that's probably been their point of difference here. But he sniffed this out. But, John, you, you've got to say with Bird and Barrett, one point of this difference with them compared to other five is probably his pace. Yeah, and, and again, you, you, you can't underestimate the value of an intercept try, can't you? Yeah, you, um, you've so, seen uh, you <laughs> <laughs> you know, you, you, you saw it yeah, again. But, but Bird and Barrett uh, must be one of the top five best players in world rugby at the moment. You know, he's, he's again as well. He, he can't do anything wrong. He's got electrifying pace um, and, uh, and he's just a phenomenal player for the Hurricanes and, and for the national side. So th th this try, I think, just poor, poor defence from the Chiefs. But he has been playing well for quite some time now. I suppose consistency is the thing or the difference in the last couple of uh, months. Why is it that it's taken him so long to crack that All Blacks number 10 jersey. What is it about the All Blacks coaches? What are they seeing that he either wasn't ready for or needed to work on? Well, I think, I think X, there's a, there's a guy called uh, Dan Carter that played the... <laughs> just, just a know, about yeah, know. but he's gone, Ruth. I don't know if you remember him. Uh, you know, and, and he wasn't too bad. Uh, he was World Player of the Year yeah. last year, so... Uh, uh, you know, that, that has been in the way of, of Bowden Barrett making it. Um, and, and they seem to back Aaron Cruden now as well. So, yeah. you know, having the quality of, of those two guys along with the Lima Sop Sopawanga, as we mentioned earlier, is fantastic. But flip side for South Africa, yes, I, I think we should start looking at what we have and just say, you know, from a fly point of view, having an Elton Yankees, having a Pat Lambie, having a guy like Andre Pollard still coming back, yeah. you know, having a... Um, a you know, a couple of other guys, youngsters from the Stormers and, and wherever coming through as well. You know, that's fantastic. Garth April coming through. So we, we're fortunate in that regard as well. We are fortunate, oh. as you see there behind me, the Very guys nice. are applauding the crowd. Uh, and they go off. That's the last match oh. at Emirates that's Airline Park for the season. What a, what a, what a, what a send-off, um, I think. You know, 50,000 people at Emirates Airline Park um, all coming out supporting the boys. So hopefully, you know, there's something that the, the way, um, a way within which the supporters can you know, come together and support the team again uh, next week. But, you know, how great is this, Sami? I mean, you know, for every player, John, we've all <laughs> been there to be able to be part of something so magical, support us coming out. And this is Joburg. Uh, I mean, Joburg, it's tough to get, you know, your support uh, week in and week out. And I think, <laughs> with what, but if you look at it, you know, if you go to Cape Town, it's a rugby culture. Yeah. You look at the Lions. I mean, the Lions are surrounded by five top soccer team so they have to compete with other sports now here's a team in form performing week in and week out now find themselves in the final so to all those uh, die hard lion supporters that used to be in the closet they now out of the closet they're talking walking <laughs> around lions t-shirt on talking about the team and that's beautiful you know to see that belief coming back and it's all because of what this place have managed to achieve mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, actually, we, we wouldn't want you uh, starting to cry now, but... Uh, <laughs> well, Alton has cried. Alton has cried, so I mean, I might as well just... Let, but that's what it means. Amazing. <laughs> yeah, that's, I think even from a, from a non-Lions, I think we, no. we should sit down and just applaud the Lions for what they have achieved. And also every single individual in that team, well done today. Yeah, and uh, we generally also don't hear about everybody else um, who is in the background from Swayze to Brain, JP Ferreira, Ivan van Royen, Bafana and Tleko, the coaching staff. Well done to you guys. Good luck, Lions, next week. There'll be a lot of talk about what we can expect in that final. Thank you, gents.
before behaving as well. Thanks and thank the you at home. Uh, what a wonderful weekend. And uh, Kaiser Chiefs beat Pirates 2-0, just by the way. Yeah. <laughs> Go Lions and well done. <laughs> Cheers. It wasn't a draw. <laughs> Can you get that mic check? One, two, one, two, twelve, two, two, twelve, twelve. Just calm down. Up.